talk to me a little bit about um, growing up. Uh, you said music has been a big part of your life since you were a baby, a big part of your family. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Yeah, well, I mean, I have five older siblings, and so growing up, I just, they were the people I looked up to, including my parents, too, but uh, my parents have always encouraged musicality in our family and my sister sings a lot of my brothers sing they play instruments like piano violin guitar and so I always looked up to them so much that I just remember from the time I was little I wanted to be like them and kind of follow in their footsteps and so that's kind of what started me singing I think and you sing you play the piano is that pretty much what yeah well I actually the first thing I started was violin I started when I was five years old and I played that, and then obviously I sang too, but not really seriously, I would say, until I got to the high school under Mr. Johnson, and he just really inspired me to want to pursue singing more, and so then I learned piano so that I could kind of accompany myself if I wanted to write music or cover songs. So, so when did you, so you learned like in ninth grade, or when did you uh, learn piano? Oh, I probably didn't start learning piano until like maybe summer before my junior year. I, ha I really haven't been playing that long. I'm not that good. Um, I, I sort of just taught myself, like, I, I would say that there's kind of two types of musicians, ones who are more technical, technically uh, mindsetted and ones who can kind of hear the music. And I'm definitely someone who I can hear something and play it better than I can read music. So I would just listen to songs on YouTube or whatever, or watch a YouTube video and try to learn the music. And so I don't know. It was fun for me to figure it out on my own and then add my own words to it, I guess. So talk to me about the process of like writing music with words and mixing yeah, it with the I mean, I think work? for every songwriter it's different because I definitely I never took a class on songwriting or learned how to do it. For me, I. I, I always write the lyrics first. They kind of just are something that'll come to my mind and I'll start writing. So it sort of starts out like you're writing a poem or something. And then I'll sit down at the piano and for whatever reason, some melody will come to me and hopefully it's not a melody that I've heard before and it's my own, which it usually is. But I'll just kind of play with it with different rhythms and uh, usually one will stick after a while. And then I'll record myself so I remember how it went. And if I ever have to come back to it, so, I don't know. It's not really a process. I think it's a process that's kind of individual to every single person. Sure. And you have written how many songs? I think I'm up to, like, 14 now. Okay. So, yeah, pretty good number. I, I just started writing, like, a year ago. So, some of them are not as good as others. I have my favorites, but I just try to whenever I'm inspired by someone's story or by something, I try to write a song about it. Okay, talk to me about uh, His Daughter. It's getting a lot of mm -hmm. attention right now. Yeah. Um, when did you write it? I wrote it almost exactly a year ago, a little less than a year ago, actually. So was that one of your first songs? Yeah, I think it was the second actual song I wrote. Um, I wrote a song in, I think, in January last year, and then didn't really do anything for a while, and then I wrote his daughter in the end of May. It was the end of school year, and the song basically follows the story of a girl, and she grew up in an abusive home where her dad is abusive to her mom, and that's kind of where it starts. You start with her as a six-year-old, and talks about how her mom didn't want her to feel the pain that she felt, but she still felt that pain, obviously, just in a different way. And then you move forward to when she's 16 years old and her dad's out of the picture now. But So she tries to fill that need with other guys or other things. And she's just looking for that kind of love that she's been missing as, since she was a child. And so then when it gets to the chorus, it just is basically her plea to, if there's a God out there, will you please hear my prayer? And I, like, I'm lost, I'm scared, I don't know what else to do. And she's looking for someone who can be her father. And then it kind of skips forward and it's like she's going great, she is doing well, and then all of a sudden she goes to a party, has a drink, and ends up pregnant. And it's like, I think we all have times in our lives like that when we think we're going great, we're on highs, and then all of a sudden 
one thing happens and we hit a low and we're back where we started. And so she's confused again. She doesn't know where else to go. Now she has baby in the picture. And then, I don't know, the song, it kind of, it gets to the bridge and that's where it kind of reconciles that she has this son. And even though it started out as one of the lowest points in her life, find, finding that out, he ends up teaching her how much God loves her through, through the love that she has for her son. And then she gets to the end of her life and she realizes that even through all those times when she was confused, when she didn't know if anyone was even listening to her, that God was working through her all along. And so I think a lot of people, that happens in our own lives. I know my life, there's been so many times where I just feel like nothing's going right. Like, God, where are you? What's happening in my life right now? And then I look back on those situations and think, oh, okay, there was a reason for that. There was a plan for that. And so just kind of, to me, the, the story isn't my own personal experience. Um, it's sort of based off of different stories from people I know and love, but it's just kind of encouragement to anyone who may have ever felt like they're alone or they don't know where to turn to and just kind of that encouragement that everything happens for a reason and there is someone who's watching over for you and there's always someone who cares about you and in the end you're going to look back on your life and realize that you wouldn't want to change any of it. Mm -hmm. I wrote the song to impact people but I never could have even imagined the impact it's had so far and I know it's not just because of me, it's definitely a God thing and his timing is perfect, so. How does it make you feel when you hear those stories of how impactful your music was? <sighs> it, it's humbling because I, I, I feel like I didn't do anything. I feel like it's, it's not my story. It's not like I just, and using my experiences to impact these people, I feel like I'm just the person who had the courage to share that story with everyone. And so it's, it's overwhelming because, I don't know, I just, I've always wanted to have an impact on people and I've always wanted to inspire people. But growing up, you know, I, I felt like, well, I've had a pretty like boring, easy life. How am I ever going to... Because, you know, you hear speakers and all these things they've had to overcome and go through. And for me, it was kind of discouraging. Like, well, I, my life's pretty normal. Like, how am I supposed to ever be able to inspire people or motivate people? And so just knowing that I could do that at such a young age is amazing. To say the least. Chad, do you think you can get a two shot? And before mm -hmm. we, we'll do a two shot and then we'll uh, have Molly play.